Hello, everyone. Let me see if I have this clicker working. Yes. Well, we, we sort of went over this. I just thought I'd start off with uh, just a brief page about myself, so maybe just fill in a couple little details. Um, my undergraduate is in philosophy. Uh, I actually took enough courses uh, as an undergraduate technically to also do a religious studies minor, though I never declared. Courses in theology, biblical studies, religion and art and literature. Um, I went to Yale University afterwards because I, I wanted to basically expand my breadth of familiarity with theology. And so I focused on history of theology, uh, took courses also in contemporary theology, biblical studies, uh, aiming ultimately towards focusing in the philosophy of religion, which I have done. I then went to Boston University primarily to focus on Kant's philosophy of religion, and I wrote my dissertation on themes that relate to the relationship between ethics and religion and Kant. I've been uh, at OSU, as uh, Dr. Weichel said, since, 90, since 1998, um, was tenured and promoted to associate professor in 2004. Um, promoted a full professor in 2014. I have something approximately 60 publications in philosophy, religion, philosophical theology, dealing with issues in religious epistemology, ethics in religion, soteriology, just some sample titles for papers, uh, religion, religious ascent and the question of theology, the many gods objection to Pascal's wager, uh, Kant on the dead of sin, Baumgarten and Kant on rational theology, and a commentary on Kant's religion within the boundaries of mere reason. Uh, for OSU, I've organized uh, various events related to religious studies. For instance, I organized a conference for the North American Kant Society on Kant's philosophy of religion here in 2012. As well as that, for roughly the last decade, uh, I have organized various student-oriented workshops on themes in religion, uh, religion and testimony, uh, probability in the philosophy of religion, the problem of evil, divine hiddenness, and so forth. Moving on. Um, let me start talking about sort of things that I would like to be able to do right off the bat. So myself or perhaps whomever else is the director of religious studies, some of the ideas that I think would be worth considering um, convening a steering committee fairly soon. So perhaps at the end of the semester or during the summer. And the steering committee I have in mind of something in the order of six faculty members as well as include um, a student, uh, perhaps a junior or a um, well, I guess it wouldn't be a senior since they'd be graduating, but perhaps a junior as a student representative for the steering committee. And faculty would be coming from philosophy, history, art and art history, English, social sciences, one or both of the new TAPs also on the steering committee. Um, some of the other things that I'd like to be able to start right away is ensure that the new TAPs and the existing TAPs working in religious studies have appropriate mentoring, um, so uh, connect them with an individual mentor or senior faculty member and also I think something that can be neglected which shouldn't be neglected but something that I think that we don't often do enough is have peer observations of their teaching so the incoming TAPs as they get acquainted with uh, OSU faculty provide have them um, have their mentor provide them with appropriate feedback as they're moving forward through the semester. Uh, right now, the Department of Philosophy, History Department, I imagine other departments as well, are working on workload policies for TAP. So um, monitor that and hopefully do what we can to make sure that they're fairly, <coughs> excuse me, fairly harmonious with one another. And then at least begin discussions about fundraising. And I'll get back to some issues of fundraising later. So those are some of the goals that I have right off the bat for the summer. And so now let me move on to the next academic year. First of all, I think really crucial to the success of a program is developing a community, a sense of community between students and faculty and also a student community. And I, I have in mind as the um, advisor for the community, Matthew Pereira, I just thought that his character, his dynamism would be something that would be very well suited to being the advisor for the student organization. Obviously that's up to him, but just somebody I thought would be a good person as an advisor. Some of the things that I'd like to be able to do in terms of this organization and building a community would be to set up some sort of informal student faculty discussion groups. Uh, in philosophy, uh, we have these things called Pizza Fridays where students and faculty can meet and discuss one or another topic. So something similar for religious studies. A movie night, there are just so many movies and television shows with religious themes that I thought that would be the kind of thing that would draw a lot of students. Um, in philosophy, there's something called Friends of the Forums, a very successful student-run um, uh, pr 
uh, guest speaker series and something similar for religious studies I'd like to establish. Uh, and then um, beyond OSU, uh, interfaith community activities. So have uh, students attend houses of worship from other uh, religious groups, go to synagogues, go to mosques, go to Buddhist temples, uh, various festivals and so forth, but you know, basically try to expand uh, student exposure to other religions locally. Uh, broadly as well, I would want this student organization to uh, ensure that it's inclusive, as inclusive as possible, because I think that a lot of the Christians within Oklahoma have outlets for uh, connecting um, to discuss religious issues, but the goal here is something that's much more uh, interfaith, and I would want that to include interested atheists and agnostics and those who may not see themselves as connected with any religious tradition but regard themselves as spiritual. In addition, um, essay prizes, artwork prizes, and um, study abroad opportunities, maybe one of the more obvious ones, summer trips to Israel, trips to Rome, and so forth. Uh, as well as that, as the semester, as the fall semester gets rolling, I'd like to have advertising campaigns. And this would include, for instance, uh, videos of our TAPs, our new TAPs, and put them on social media so they could introduce themselves and so students can come to learn who is teaching religious studies here, what they have to offer. Uh, campus posters and A-frames with a theme about just sort of the um, renewal of the religious studies program, our aspirations for growth, and letting the academic community know that we are building a program and introduce them to the student organization and particular activities. In addition to that, public talks beyond just those that are organized by students, but bring in guest speakers of various sorts, either from uh, the region um, or uh, with appropriate funding, bring in people from around the country or internationally to talk about issues in religious studies. Um, in addition to that, I think something that would be very valuable would be is if, if we had a website that served as a kind of master calendar for all of the religiously themed events going on at OSU and in Stillwater. So this would include religious festivals, but as well as that, if there is a music presentation or a uh, arts presentation that has a religious theme, try to get all those events put together into a single locus that people can turn to, some sort of web calendar that people can keep apprised of all the things that are happening regarding religious studies around here. All right, with regards to academics, some of the things that I'd like to begin working on next year would be developing some curriculum tracks. Um, curriculum tracks for students interested in graduate studies, students interested in the ministry, religion and the arts, say for instance, those who might be interested in curatorships or sacred music, uh, religion and journalism, international relations, just as an example, let's say there is a student who wants to work in the oil industry and wants to become more acquainted with Islam because they would like to work in the Middle East, and NGO employment, um, non-governmental organizations, charity organizations, and so on. And and one thing that I noted as I was looking at um, enrollment was that um, the 1,000 level uh, world religions course, approximately two-thirds of all the enrollees in that course are not students in arts and sciences. They're students in business and engineering and so on. I thought that was remarkable and I thought that that was a great opportunity. So there are students outside of arts and sciences who are definitely interested in religion. And so we can capture additional student credit hours, I would think, if we could take those students in 1103 and migrate them towards further courses in religious studies. I'll speak about more about that in a minute. Internships. Well. Um, there would be potentially opportunities for students to gain some direct experience working in houses of worship um, or NGO employment or journalism, um, local religious newspapers, magazines of various sorts, but explore what opportunities there are for student internships. <laughs> With regards to new courses, uh, I would want to seek the guidance of the steering committee, do student surveys, look at the kind of courses and their success at other institutions, but I certainly would like to be able to help add additional courses into our curriculum. Some very basic ones would be honors add-ons since they don't have to go through the same approval process, but increase the number of honors add-ons related to religious studies. Um, also, additional uh, sections perhaps of um, religion online 
and you know, not to cannibalize the actual um, uh, campus students, but I know that we're now able to set up enrollments so we get to have a certain number of students who are traditional students and a certain number of students who are outside of the traditional group of OSU students. But see whether or not we can um, spread out and offer some additional online courses. Now, one of the things that I think would help really develop this course is to add some additional 2000 level courses. And that could include the kinds of courses I think that students would probably think of as maybe a little bit more fun, a little bit more engaging. And so topics could include religion and the arts and literature, maybe religion, arts, literature, and film, religion and contemporary society, maybe a course on contemporary religious writings that could go from things like C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity to contemporary Buddhist writings like Thich Nhat Hanh. And these sorts of 2000 level courses could be advertised in the sections of 1103, again, also as a way to hopefully capture some of those SCHs from students that are outside of arts and sciences. If we pursue this for the 2000 level, then I think it might make sense to move our existing 2000 level courses, the Hebrew Scripture and New Testament, to 3000 level. That's a discussion to have at some point. So those are some of the things that I'd like to really dig into and develop in the coming academic year. Now, beyond that, I, I, I would like to see additional courses in theology offered. And we have a course called Classic Christian Writings at the 4,000 level. And I think perhaps we could turn it into a 3,000 level course and maybe rename it to something like From Augustine to Aquinas. And then have subsequent to that at the 3,000 or at the 4,000 level another theology course, um, something like From the Reformation to the 19th Century. And then thirdly, a contemporary theology course, a 20th, 21st century. So Rudolf Otto and Paul Tillich and onwards. Additional courses, some of the additional 3,000 and 4,000 level courses I've had in mind. A course on Judaism, a course on religions of Asia, a course on indigenous religions throughout the world, science and religion, gender and religion, a course on theism and atheism. Perhaps it would be a course which explores the so-called new atheists and uh, theistic responses to it. Um, a course on religion and the social sciences, which could draw from political science, psychology, sociology, and so on. So the methodology of the social sciences is applied to religion. A course on mysticism and non-traditional religions. A course on religious ethics. Now, of course, quite a few courses. We currently don't have the staffing for that, but as time goes on, hopefully, as we are able to add additional staff, some of these courses may be suitable to them. Well, regarding additional staff, some of my thoughts as to our, what our priorities would be are, are two new TAPs. Their focus is in New Testament and in early church. So we may not yet have somebody who's a specialist in the Hebrew Bible, and so a higher in the Hebrew Bible and or in Judaism, a higher in con comparative religions and or Eastern religions, uh, a higher potentially do who's doing contemporary or systematic theology, somebody who, similar to the course that I described, somebody who does religion from a social science standpoint and something related to gender studies, women and the Bible courses related to issues of gender in other religions and so on. Uh, obviously, we're right now hiring at the TAP level, but I'm sure many of us would like to be able to see hires at the assistant professor tenure track hires. And so ideally, we can eventually move towards that as if we have the appropriate number of students, advance towards a major, advance towards having a religious studies department of its own, and one that's accredited. And I just bring in that because as I was exploring possible fundraising, I noticed that a number of different foundations require that the department be accredited in, or, in order for that department or their faculty to receive funding from that organization. Um, maybe uh, a center for the study of religion, given where we are regionally, I think that that might be something we could pursue, something that might be very interesting for us to do. And so, um, you know, with that possible fundraising in terms of in-state support, 
And then just some of the national or international organizations that I glanced at that I think might be organizations that would be interested both with regards to the development of our program, having funding speaker series and so on, as well as various directed funding for conferences. That could include Templeton Foundation, the Lilly Endowment, uh, Luce Foundation, uh, American Academy of Religion Regional Development Grants. So um, these are my long-term goals, obviously many years ahead before we were able to move towards a department, but that's obviously I think what many of us aspire towards. So in summary, I think that sort of the three key things that I'm hoping to achieve, um, develop a program that really helps satisfy the intellectual curiosity of students, develop a program and organizations that really build an inclusive community, and also a, a program that is very much growth oriented, that has plans that targets various uh, stages of growth and is able to work towards them. Thank you. Questions? I hit the 15 minute mark almost did all. Yes. I get the impression that the uh, TAPs, and I've, uh, I've been to the job talks at both of them, that they are, uh, they are trained, uh, yes, the two of them, uh, in uh, Judaism and Christianity, first of all, but they're part of uh, religious studies programs mm -hmm. uh, whereby they do have to have good formation in the other world religions. When they talked about the courses they wanted to do mm -hmm. on world religions, I was impressed by their their abilities there. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering if uh, they can be uh, they can multitask. Well, well they're teaching their uh, six or nine. Years old, so I don't be doing more than that. Uh, they should be well paid, but if uh, they can oh, be pulled off uh, periodically. Uh, the Hebrew Bible and mm -hmm. uh, history of Christianity, and do something else. You'd have to see what, what their what their strengths are in greater detail. Yeah, so um, in terms of some of the courses that I have in mind, um, we can see whether or not they're already equipped to teach some of them, um, and then what their own interests are, what other courses they themselves would like to teach beyond the ones that I mentioned. With regards to their teaching world religions, um, I imagine both have enough capacity with some further study to offer real, real religions course. I think that it's being planned as actually part of their teaching schedule as is for them to teach sections of world religion. Does that address it? Sure. I was, uh, thank you so much for this. I was curious if you could speak a little bit to the, uh, uh, to the ethics of internships and study abroad and the, um, you know, the, the balance between, you know, uh, there's been a lot of discussion in religious study circles about voyeurism and tokenization, uh -huh. and the um, anthropologists, of course, have turned to participant observation. But participant observation can be very, very uncomfortable for yeah. some students with more exclusive mm -hmm. religious views. Can you speak to some of these ethical considerations for both internships and study abroad? Uh, and even just local visits to other places of worship. Well, um, I would think before any of those events, there would be a discussion with the students and the sponsoring faculty members, the <clears throat> individuals who might even host some of these events, as to what their expectations might be and what concerns they might have. So a student who might be worried as to what is he supposed to do in a synagogue, right? You know, is he supposed to stand when everybody stands? What if he doesn't believe this way? Is he supposed, what is he supposed to do? Well. Um, those are touchy subjects, and I think that uh, most houses of worship would, would welcome um, spectators who are curious, um, and hopefully most would find themselves sufficiently comfortable to be sort of a relatively innocuous observer. Uh, when it comes to uh, something that's more involved, such as uh, travel abroad, well, students would probably have to be given a clear enough sense of, of what the itinerary is going to be and what some of the ethical concerns are. For instance, if there is a trip to Israel, there are students who may be concerned having to do with the local politics 
and they might have ethical qualms about one aspect or another aspect. So uh, at least an open discussion and to field what sort of concerns student have, students have prior to any of those activities, I think would be a good starting point. Other questions? You mentioned that you've been looking into possibilities for fundraising, mm -hmm. and you listed some names of some foundations that you uh, found out about. Mm -hmm. How much actual experience in fundraising for academic purposes have you yourself had in the past? Well, I, I have not had a lot. I have applied to various grants, both in-house and, and beyond. I've helped with the Ex Ethics Center grant writing and with the programming at the OSU Ethics Center. Um, so I have, I have never been somebody that spent a lot of time pursuing grants, but um, grant writing process is, is not something that's foreign to me. on this, but I'm curious, um, as a philosopher, what do you think a philosopher would bring to a director of religious studies? What's the well, I, as I see it, f philosophy has a kind of broad sort of aspirational vision of itself that it could in theory speak to any topic now that might be sort of you know arrogant on the part of the philosopher to think that one could do a philosophy of, of anything but the sort of the nature of philosophy is to raise so many different questions and consider the relationships between so many different concepts that I think that since religious studies touches on such an array of fields beyond philosophy everything ranging across the social sciences and history and the arts and so on, that philosophers have views with regards to the arts and philosophers have um, views with regards to the social sciences. And so philosophers tend to seek a way of systematizing different domains of thought. So I, I, I kind of see myself as somebody who does that sort of thing. And so I would think that sort of I would have sort of a general openness and drive to think about the connections between all the different domains of inquiry that shape religious studies. 